your network has money, right? So very early on when I got into the industry, I recognized right in my close network how much money I had access to. Now, as I'm sure we'll get into and as people have learned from your podcast, being, you know, seeing how much money is available in your network, in your close network as as mine was, and actually getting access to that are two very different things. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. Welcome to another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm your host, Jay Connor, also known as the Private Money Authority. And wow, have we got an amazing show lined up for you today. If you've been tuning into Raising Private Money, you know this is where you learn how to get private money, how to get a lot of it, how to never miss out on a deal, and how to be in control of your real estate investing. Well, my guest today has got a really very unique approach uh, and investment strategy that he calls asymmetrical returns. What in the world is that? You're getting ready to find out. Well, he's figured out why these alternative investments are really creating true generational wealth. And I know you want to learn exactly how that works. In addition, he's the host of an amazing podcast as well that he calls the Daily Real Estate Podcast, the Cash Flow Chronicles. The reason I know it's so amazing is because I was a guest on his show last week. Well, on top of all this, he has raised hundreds of thousands of dollars in private money to boot. Well, after this, you're going to meet my guest, Mr. Johnny Katani. And ladies and gentlemen, here's Johnny. You know, I've been wanting to say that like Ed McMahon for like decades. Hey, Johnny, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks, Jay. Great to be here. <laughs> it's great to have you. And man, didn't I have an amazing time on your podcast last week? Uh, wow, what an amazing interview you are. The Cash Flow Chronicles. Thank you so much for having me on last week, Johnny. Hey, thanks for coming on. I really, really enjoyed it. And uh, I know my listeners are going to be excited when it airs. Awesome. Awesome. Well, this show is Raising Private Money. So you know we're going to talk about raising private money. You've raised hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in private money. Um, And we'll talk about that first. And then after that, I want us to move into this unique investment strategy that I never heard of in my life. And my best guess is, since I've been around the block a few decades, my listeners may not have ever heard of this investment strategy that you call, my lens, asymmetrical returns. That's like, you know, (laughs) that's like warping my brain. I mean, I don't even know if asymmetrical returns is a good thing or not, but we're getting ready to find out. Let's talk about private money first. So what kind of deals are you doing that you're raising private money for, Johnny? Yeah, so the deal uh, most recently is actually a very unique deal in that it was, it's still commercial, but it's not your typical multifamily, right? That's the the big sexy that everyone's for. Also, uh, you know, self-storage mobile home parks. This was actually, or is, the number one private short-term rental portfolio uh, available to investors. So, very unique deal, very unique opportunity in that uh, what they basically did was take short-term rentals and create a commercial product, right? So essentially buying residential real estate in top markets and turning them into uh, short-term rentals, which then are traded on a cap rate and therefore become a, a commercial product. 
Uh, you're essentially what we did was we created a fund and raised money in that fund, and then that fund was a single investor into this short-term rental portfolio. There's 70 short-term rentals in there already, already a full year of operation. Um, like I said, top operator, top private uh, operator in the space. And because of how much money we raised, we we're able to negotiate uh, a little bit better uh, return economics, return profile for our investors. So really, really appealing and a really awesome deal that we are very excited about. Well, you know, Johnny, regardless as to the type of deal that a real estate investor or entrepreneur would raise money for, whether it's single family houses, which is what I primarily do, or it's a commercial deal, apartments, or it's a very unique um, project like you have going on. When it comes to raising private money, it's all the same money. Yep. It's all the same money. It's like, Absolutely. It's like, you know, it's individuals, like we're raising money from individuals. So first of all, let's make this really, really clear uh, to our listeners. Uh, when we talk about raising private money, we're not talking about going to a commercial lender or a bank or a hard money lender. By the way, I got a lot of great friends that are hard money brokers. And I say, put together as many relationships as you can, uh, because, you know, the more relationships you have, the larger your network, therefore equaling the larger your net worth. But in what we're talking about here on private money is raising money from individuals. So same money, getting it from individuals. And what these individuals, these individual private lenders are doing are they are investing their money either from their liquid investment uh, money, their liquid investment capital or and or they may be investing retirement funds that they have moved over to what we call a self directed IRA. So with that being the case of uh, this particular project that you've been raising private money for, uh, two questions. First of all, since it's all the same private money, my guess is, Johnny, you find your private lenders in, in many of the same places that I find my private lenders. So I want us to talk about that first. Where do you find your private lenders, human beings like you and me to invest in your projects? And then secondly, uh, the next follow-up question to that will be, what is it about your project that really gives your investors a sense of security to where they don't like way asleep at night, tossing and turning in their bed, that they're going to lose right their investment with you? But back to the first question, I know where I find my private lenders for my projects. Where do you find your private lenders? Yeah, great question. Uh Really simple. It is fascinating once you get into the industry and or you know you you start honing in on on private money and realize you have a, I shouldn't say access. Your network has money, right? So very early on when I got into the industry, I recognized right in my close network how much money I had access to. Now, as I'm sure we'll get into, and as people have learned from your podcast. Being, you know, seeing how much money is available in your network, in your close network, as as mine was, and actually getting access to that are two very different things. But, you know, when you really sit down and look at, you know, friends and family, really is is where I started. You start to realize that, you know, depending on what age you're at, you know, luckily I'm at the age now where I'm starting to have some high net worth you know, friends, family, high, high income earners. And due to that, I was able to access that money with a really good investment. So uh, you start out with family, friends, uh, some people would call private money, relationship money. Yep. And it really is relationship money. The, the private money can be coming from people that you already have a relationship with. But then I practice and teach all the time. You know, sometimes our new real estate investor, uh, Johnny, will say to me, well, all my people are broke. <laughs> my people don't have any money. Well, first of all, Johnny, I don't believe them. No, nope. right. I don't believe them. What I hear them saying is um, I'm not comfortable talking about private money. I don't really know what to say. I don't know how to approach, you know, a potential private lender. So in addition to our own network, right, 
of family, friends, relationships. I practice and teach. I say, you know, go to your expanded market. And they say, well, what in the world is your expanded market? Expand your network, right? A lot of it for me becomes becoming involved in the local community, getting involved. You know, where do you go to church, right? Um, are you involved in the civic club? Are you in the rotary club? Are you involved in the chamber of commerce? So, the, you know, are you involved in a networking group? I'll tell you, uh, Johnny, Business Networking International, BNI, I joined it way back in 2007, even before I started raising private money. That's when I was a mortgage broker uh, and a loan officer. I tell you what, BNI, Business Networking International, and every community in town's got one, has gotten me so much private money mm -hmm. by just becoming involved in Business Networking International, getting involved in these uh, clubs and associations to where you are a servant. You go to these organizations volunteering. I volunteered to be the educational coordinator in, in our local uh, BNI. As a result, I had five minutes every time we met once a week to give an educational point or training on how to be a better networker. And as a result, I was, you know, in the limelight for five minutes uh, at every meeting. And so I was like the go-to person on how to like to be a really good networker. And therefore, my trust, my credibility was elevated. And so I was able to raise hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars just from being in the BNI network. So, you know, as we say, grow your network equals growing your net worth. Now, back to your project and the money that you have raised for the project. How is it that your private lenders, this is my second question that I already pitched to you. Um, how is it that your private lenders don't lay awake at night worrying that their investment is a good one and a safe one, a secure one, a conservative investment? Yeah, that's a great question. It... Well, it boils down to know, like, and trust, right? The, the thing that you realize when you get into whatever industry, right, whether you're, you know, private money for uh, residential, single family, commercial, the return profiles are pretty similar amongst most deals happening, right? If, if the operator is good, Underwriting is conservative. All, all the points are checked. The, the profile is going to be similar, right? Now, there may be a few differences here and there. You know, maybe you're going to get a, depending on the asset, you may get your cash flow sooner. Maybe it's a long term deal. You're not going to get it for three years, whatever it may be, right? But the, the metrics are going to be similar. So, really, what it comes down to is it comes down to you. Do they trust you? Do they trust your process for vetting the deal, right? What is your process for vetting the deal? You know, and and being able to show them how, you know, uh, detail oriented you are in your vetting process, right? How well do you know the operator? Have you been able to talk to them uh, personally, right? Have you met them in person? You know, do they have a track record, right? Researching all of these things, and then you know, how did you meet them, right? So one nice thing about being in the industry and and one reason that you know a lot of people have started to trust me is because like you i see constant deals right i probably see i would say anywhere from i would say probably 2 to 3 a day come into my inbox and really the biggest difference is do i know this person or not if i know them or they've been referred to me by someone i trust then i will look at that deal if not then honestly i'm probably not even going to look at it so it really comes down to my vetting process and my investors trusting me and knowing that I'm not going to show them a deal, A, that hasn't been vetted thoroughly, and B, that I wouldn't invest in myself. That's the biggest thing, especially starting out, is if you're going to go to private lenders, private money, you know, especially retail individual investors, it's so, so important that you're investing alongside of them to give them that last little bit of confidence that you're like, hey, whether you invest or not, I'm still investing this deal. That's how much I like it. I'm visiting with my friend and guest, Johnny Catani, and his contact information, his website is www.catanicapitalgroup.com. 
And uh, if you're from Eastern North Carolina, you have no idea how to spell Katani. So I will spell <laughs> that for you. That's www.cattani, Katani, C-A-T-T-A-N-I, Capital Group dot com for Johnny's contact information. Johnny, let's go ahead and give our listeners an amazing gift that will get them on the fast track to raising private money, never missing out on a deal, having more money to use than you can actually put to work. I'm so excited. I just recently finished writing my private money guide, which is called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and help you build incredible wealth, you can download this private money guide absolutely free at www.jayconner.com forward slash money guide. Download the private money guide at jayconner.com forward slash money guide. This private money guide will get you on the fast track to getting you private money for your real estate deals. No question about it, Johnny. We are in uncertain times. Uh, Our economy is in more or less chaos, uh, influx going on. Uh, Stock market has gone haywire. Mortgage rates have lost their mind. And no comment on the current administration. (laughs) Putting all that aside... During economic uncertainty, how do you go about, I mean, is now a good time to raise capital? I mean, people are looking at what's going on in the economy, what's going on in the market. Real estate prices are at an all sta- at an all-time high. Um, you know, is this a good time? Uh, what's your comments on raising capital in economic uncertainty? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. It's now, I think, here's what I think. I think now is an incredible time. And I think over the next 12 to 18 months, especially, we're going to see uh, more and more opportunity available. Now, it's not a big blanket uncertainty, right? Very market dependent with this uh, recession or downturn, whatever you want to call it. Apparently, the, the definition of recession is changing daily. So who really knows anymore? Speaking of... Uh, the current administration. But I think that if you can, if A, if you can raise capital right now over the next, you know, probably two to three years, then when the market takes back off again, it's going to be far simpler. But I think right now is an incredible time to be looking at real estate. Just like you mentioned, the stock market going haywire, right? Now, it's very important to know what you're getting into, right? Don't just go throw your money and not understand what you're investing in. But when you look at data, the the commercial real estate as a whole and, and real estate, we'll just say real estate as a whole is far more stable over a 20 year period than the stock market. So if you're looking for that stability, especially you alluded early on, you know, in IRAs and retirement accounts, self-directed IRAs, self-directed 401ks, where, you know, as you get older, your risk profile drops, right? You don't have nearly as much speculation in your portfolio. What financial advisors try to tell you is, oh, let's move you into some super safe mutual fund, you know, really, really slow growth over the next 20 years. And that's great. I'm not knocking the stock market. I I think that a portion of your portfolio should be involved there. I think, you know, there are some good opportunities. However, when you're really looking at a truly risk adjusted uh, investment, real estate is far more stable. And oh, by the way, it's real. If you invest in an apartment complex with a top operator in the Midwest, you can literally fly there and go touch that apartment complex and see what you've invested in. That mutual fund that your financial advisor advised you on, you can't get that uh, mutual fund manager on the phone and have a personal conversation with him and understand what he's like. You can do that in real estate. And so for me, what I'm trying to help people understand and educate them about is it's okay as long as you have that long-term mindset that real estate requires, 
it's okay that you can't just log on and check your portfolio daily like you can the stock market. And I think that's where a lot of people get hung up because it gives them some sense of control when they can go and get a daily update of their portfolio. But in reality, you're not in control at all. In real estate, there's far more controllable variables that allow you to really understand and make a really, really good investment decision. You know, Johnny, um, I couldn't agree with you more. It's interesting. Since COVID, on this side of COVID, <clears throat> I've had more private money chasing me than ever before. And uh, I can tell you why that is. What's tying in right now with the stock market, the volatility, people are scared. Uh, as you say, the older people get, the less time they've got to recover or their portfolio has got to recover in case of a downturn. In this world of private money, our private lenders know exactly what their return is going to be. Like there's nothing that comes out of the investment. It's like putting your money in a certificate of deposit at the bank, except instead of getting 0.9%, you're getting a whole lot more money than that. And you don't have to worry about the volatility of the value of your investment as in the stock market. Another thing, <clears throat> the reason I've got so much private money chasing me today, Johnny, is because prior to COVID, there was $18 trillion in cash that people had in their retirement accounts, not knowing what to do with it. And today there's $31 trillion with a T, $31 trillion in cash sitting on the sidelines. And people are looking for a place to put their investment capital, their retirement funds that is safe, that is secure, that they don't have to worry about losing that money. And your project is a great example of where they can, you know, invest those funds. So yes, today, this year is the best time for people to invest their money securely in real estate. As you said, real estate, even with this volatility, on the long term is so much more safe than even say the stock market. Johnny, I want you to share your story about your very first $150,000 that you raised in private capital. I remember just like yesterday, my very first private lender uh, that came on with me and my wife, Carol Joy, was in February of 2009. I can remember where we were. I know where the conversation took place. I know what the conversation was. I can't wait to hear your story about your first private lender. Yeah, so mine was a scratch. And as, as I imagine most people for their first ever raise, right? When you're going and getting money outside of, of your own, obviously, outside of hard money lenders, banks, blah, 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 right? We're talking private lenders. It was a scratch and a claw. Now, it, it was funny because uh, I started with, you know, going to, of course, friends and family, right? And go to my dad. And my dad is an old farm boy from Idaho. He's 60, gosh, I'm, let's see, he's 64. And, you know, didn't really focus on retirement until probably about 10, 12 years ago. They, finally started, you know, getting a 401k with his employer and all that. So he's behind, needless to say. And so in my head, I'm like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity, right? I I would I'm going to present this opportunity to him because I want him to understand the power that real estate can bring to you especially as you're moving towards retirement in terms of like we mentioned stability, you know, obviously uh depending on the deal there can be cash flow which you can you know, the more you invest, obviously, the more cash flow you can get to, even getting to the point of, you know, being financially free. Uh, most people clarify, you know, call that basically having all their expenses paid for from passive cash flow. So I'm like, sweet, I'm going to go pitch this to him, set him up on it. And he was interested, you know, he was, he was like, okay, yeah, you're right. I haven't been doing the best in terms of, of setting myself up retirement. So I'm talking to him and he's on the fence, but because the deal was such a good deal, he was like, well, 
my financial advisor, his actual financial advisor was like, was also interested in getting into real estate and being a passive investor in real estate. So he's like, you know what, go talk to um, Ed and, you know, go pitch it to Ed and let's see, literally go pitch it to his financial advisor, his financial advisor and his financial advisor's partner both decide to invest because of that, of course, then my dad and stepmom got on board and invested. So it was kind of a very weird scenario where typically you wouldn't, you know, typically you're getting your close friends and family first, and then the, you know, plus ones and, and the degrees of separation start to kind of fall in. Whereas this was a unique scenario in that I actually had to go one degree away to a financial advisor who typically advises into the stock market. Now, as luck would have it, he's a registered advisor, so he can advise on alternative assets. So it actually worked out very serendipitously. And, you know, lo and behold, of course, now they're invested and it's, you know, um, starting to present some some good partnership opportunities for more deals down the road. But, man, you want to talk about sweating and staying up at night. I was. I was worried for sure. And of course, you know, the money didn't come to like the 11th hour, which, you know, makes it even that much more uh, stressful, but we made it through and it's an incredible story and one I will continue to tell. And I'm sure in 10 years, it'll feel like it just happened yesterday. Johnny, when I was a guest on your podcast, do you remember us talking about this? When in the world is the worst time to be raising private money? Yes. Right. And I had to learn that the hard way, <laughs> of course. <laughs> Just in case our listeners missed the point, the worst time to be raising private money is when you need it. <laughs> when you need it. Yeah. And and do not do not let it do not let the fact that it's your friends and family and especially cro- close friends and family when you're first starting out fool you into thinking that you can go in the 11th hour and get money from them because I promise you that is not the case. In fact, I might even argue that it's more challenging from your close friends and family, which of course, why not everyone does this and, and what makes it so hard to get going. But, uh, yes, learn from my mistake. Do not raise when you need it. Be always raising. Um, and you know, that's a valuable lesson that I learned there. Yeah. And you know, and that's why I preach and practice the money comes first. Yes. There's always going to be deals. There's always going to be deals. And just think how much more confident you are when you've got money burning a hole in your pocket. And, you know, I never made a, I never, I never bought a property. I never made an offer on, right? How much more confident we are in making offers when we know we've got the funding. You know, I've got friends that teach, oh, go get the deal under contract. Go get the deal under contract. The money will show up. Yeah. And I want to say, where? Yeah. where's the money going to, sh- is it like going to rain out of the cloud or whatever, you know, but you know, what's really funny about your story, Johnny, is your first private lenders were financial advisors. I know. Isn't that insane? <laughs> well, you know, what's funny about that financial advisors, 99.9% of them. And by the way, I got great friends that are financial advisors, much smarter than I am. They're the guys that made straight A's in college. Yes. I made C's and D's and barely got out. But anyway, um, you know, one of my very first uh, private lenders was with Fannie Mae for 30 years. Wow. Fannie Mae. And you know, what's funny about that is the, the people in the financial realm that are professionals, they never heard of self-directed IRAs and, P- and being able to move retirement funds over to an IRS approved third party custodian that these people can then invest with us and loan money. The reason they never heard of it is because there's no money in it for them. Right. <laughs> there's yeah. no commissions. There's no, you know, that's a whole different world of where people can move retirement funds in order to invest. So, Johnny, we have kept our audience listening from the beginning, waiting to hear what in the world is asymmetrical returns. This investment strategy you call asymmetrical returns. Pull the curtain back and tell us what in the world is that? All right. Well, first I got to give a shout out. This is not my original uh, idea. I got to give a shout out to uh, my mentor, Hunter Thompson. 
Um, but essentially asymmetrical, obviously we know what symmetrical means, right? Same on both sides. Asymmetrical just means there's a higher, in this case, an asymmetrical return means that the upside is a lot higher than the downside. So by, again, coming full circle, vetting and understanding the deal and why the downside is so low and the upside is so high. So, you know, the easy points here are, you know, how is the debt structured, right? And that's for all real estate, whether it's commercial, residential, whatever you're doing, right? Good debt, so, so important. Do not want to be over leveraged, especially now as we head forward. A lot of these opportunities that are going to present themselves are going, going to be because of bad debt, uh, you know, distressed debt on some of these deals. So essentially what you're doing is you're just taking the uh, return profile and making it higher than the downside risk and you have an asymmetrical return. Wow. I thought it was going to be so much more of a mystery than that. I know, right? <laughs> Don't you? That's the best part about it is everyone's like, oh, asymmetrical. What does that mean? You're just like, oh, well, you know, what's good about it is uh, I actually understood it. <laughs> yes, correct. Awesome. I knew you would. I knew you would. Oh, mercy. Um, so if you are listening to this show right now, uh, either live or on our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, et cetera, and you're looking for some really significant returns and doing business with somebody that knows what they're doing, that has vetted out the deals. You're interested in real estate, but you're really not interested in negotiating deals. You'd like to get a high rate of return safely and sit back and just be totally passive. Then I recommend you reach out to my friend, Johnny Katani. You can reach him at his website, www.katanicapitalgroup.com, spelled C-A-T-T-A-N-I. Katani, C-A-T-T-A-N-I, capitalgroup.com. Johnny, last word. Jay, thank you so much for having me on. It's been uh, an incredible experience. I look forward to hopefully uh, being able to add some more value as we go to your listeners. And I'm very grateful to all those who listen. And shameless plug, uh, I do have an a free ebook that you can download is oh please give that out Johnny I didn't is know you commercial had a free real estate yeah. is commercial real estate recession proof a lot of really awesome data points in there even more uh, info than I gave today you can find that at investwithkatani.com investwithkatani.com and one more time what's the name of that book is commercial real estate recession proof is commercial Real estate recession proof. I love it. Thank you so much, Johnny, for offering up that free gift to our audience. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Jay. God bless you, Johnny. There you have it, my friend, another episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. And if you found this episode valuable, do me a favor. We really appreciate the likes, the shares, uh, subscribe. Uh, if you're listening on iTunes, be sure and uh, tap follow. And if you're watching on YouTube, tack, uh, click that bell. Make sure you don't miss out on any upcoming episodes as well. And share this episode with a friend or colleague or family member of yours that you think would benefit as well. Thank you so much for joining Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, wishing you all the best. Here's to taking your business to the next level. And we'll see you right here on the next Raising Private Money. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's j-c-o-n-n-e-r.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with J.